This is Two Second Lean in Tulsa and <laughs> we have an issue. I've done some research online and here's where I'm going to start and see if we can find it. There is a screw right there and there's another one right there and they are roughly roughly one third of the way in on each side on this make model and brand another issue is that it was hard for me to see and it's because it's dirty so that needs to be cleaned quick update before i go any further unplugged this top came out relatively easy and to let you know I'm gonna keep it oriented this is the dirty side the only thing that was really holding it on are I believe it's two three four tabs and this would be the bottom and they're really small and then you have something similar but a lot wider on the top and time to clean that and move on to the next step using that flashlight and a screwdriver with a long Phillips head attachment I pulled these two out and just to show you that they are well over an inch long each one real quick note on what I'm using to clean. I tried a bunch of different methods and none of them worked. They all sucked. Just regular household dish soap, an ugly cleaning rag, Q-tips, those things are plentiful and they're cheap, water from the sink to rinse, take it outside and use uh, synthetic Trivial uh, motion to uh, wick away most of the water and then an ugly towel to dry the rest of it and then allow it to air dry for the parts that you can't get to or maybe use a hair dryer as an afterthought. Okay, I'm back after cleaning it and things that I will tell you to pay attention to is that these tabs on the bottom can break off so if you're trying to clean it in the sink like I did take that into account because it's made of plastic and they will break easy so take it easy as I'm taking things off I'm putting it left to right that was on the top so it's staying on the top and I'm gonna run with this theme for a while and we'll see where this goes I took a layer of dirt off of this metal grate and the next step is to take that screw off. Same method as before. And as a reference, this is the screw that I removed from right here and it is roughly 35-40% of the length of the first two screws. And from what I understand, you lift up on this, and it does move, and then probably pull out from the bottom, and I will have to do that not one-handed. All right, I managed to get this facing off, but in all honesty, I broke off, uh, this and this one on this left side right here and on the bottom but I can't show you one handed where they are broken until after I get this off so if you look at this these two are right here and here they do lift up but it's not very much at all. It's barely, it's less than the width of a finger. This one, on the other hand, it's nightmarish. Okay, to give you some contrast, it 
it lists up, out, up, and then it has a curve. <laughs> so have fun trying to figure out how yours works. But I'm letting you know my successes and my failures. And right now, I need to take or I need to take this screw off so I can take this off. And eventually, I believe I need to get to this, this one, and this one, and take those out and determine which one or which one of the three, if not all three, are not working correctly and either repair them or replace them. Thinking on my feet, right now, this is working fine, so I'm not gonna take that off, but I will grab a Torx wrench or Allen key to remove that one and this one and start troubleshooting. In an effort to keep you updated, watch this. You have to take off both of these to get this entire thing off because I don't understand how to get I understand how to take this off of this, but I don't know how to pull that blue piece out of this white piece. So I'm going to remove the entire white piece and attempt to remove the blue ones while the entire assembly is outside of it because uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Just a quick reference to show you just how short those Torx head screws are compared to the other two. And so you can see as I'm trying to figure it out, there's a little hook right here. So this lifts up and apparently over, but I'm going to do the rest of it uh, two-handed. Quick update. Both of these wires are orange. So I didn't know how to keep track of both of those uh, orange wires. So I painted one of them black. Then I noticed that there are more black wires down here. So trying to keep track of all that was gonna be a nightmare. So I drew a one right there, two tick marks on the next one. So starting from the highest one and going lower, this back one on this middle assembly is slightly higher than the next two. So I gave it a three, four, and a five. This next one is a six and the one below is too far down there. I'm not going to mess with it. It just doesn't have one at all. And one more improvement is that I now know which way it goes. So simplified it even more. I obviously didn't take those off because I realized something else a minute ago. And that is... If I can get it to focus, doing this one-handed isn't real fun. That black piece right there in the center, that black male piece, all right, that's the part that you need to check. And stick your finger in there. Hear that click? That's a good piece. I checked this one right there in the center. That one also works. But this one right there, it doesn't work. So I'm not taking all three of them off to do the same thing. I'm just going to remove that one. Now the question is, is now that I got those leads off, how do you get this off? That white piece right there, slide it to the right, and this comes out. And there's no way I can do that one-handed. back and we couldn't figure out why sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't and the reason is is because that little click that's really soft compared to the other two but off camera I was playing with it and sometimes it just it'll click and it stays in there just like that in real time so it's not totally bad but it's not a hundred percent good either so next step to show you an alternate solution, 
there is a seam on one side of the edge all the way around and what I did was I took two pair of pliers one on this side of the seam and one on this side and I just pried it apart enough and I used a flathead screwdriver way smaller than this to pry it apart and you get something that looks like this okay and watching another video playing around with it there is a really really it's that that really thin piece of metal right there that needs to be re-arched and I'm gonna go ahead and try that just to see if it works but since this thing is a 2002 model and uh, my uh, and it's 2017 15 years I'm gonna go ahead and replace it but I'm just gonna play around with this just to see if I can get it working off camera I googled appliance parts found a store really close and they happen to be in business uh, for several decades and called them told them that I needed a microwave door switch they asked me which one because you have a top middle even though it's right above the bottom and then the bottom one this is the bottom one and I asked them why and they said because believe it or not they are different and after the fact you realize that that's not focusing so let's try that here that tip is rounded off but on the top and middle door switches it, they're squared off and so just externally it is different I don't know about the guts I don't need this one anymore but I'm gonna keep it around and I'm gonna take this piece off at that seam and play around with the guts on the inside and maybe re-arch that little uh, leaf spring in there see if I can't get it working and gain some more knowledge but listen and here's the new one sounds just like the top and middle one and in case you had the same make model that I do GE genuine part there is the part number and I believe that's right there I have the if this is a lifetime warranty and I'm going to put that paperwork and leave some sort of a note on there and I'm gonna put it inside the microwave door uh, right behind where all those wires were and so now I'm going to simply reverse most of the processes that I videotaped until now and put it back together and test it I made some improvements off camera and I took a magic marker and made that little line right there to represent where those uh, uh, buttons go the male part that protrudes one two so that's the bottom the middle just above the bottom and the same thing for the top one and to keep it out of the way so it doesn't interfere with this fan I stuck that microwave door switch lifetime warning receipt behind all of these wires and I don't think that it'll get pulled over here by that fan and if it does those wires should stop it and with yet another improvement <laughs> I kind of chickened out on that paper that receipt and what I did was I used some clear tape and I taped uh, the full length of the left and right sides and the top and now it's not going anywhere in all honesty I am filming this out of sequence but I will insert it into the proper area I struggled trying to put that back on up here 
So I'm going to try and give you a clue or two to reduce your stress. Okay, you need to take this area right here into account and insert this left side and the male end into this female end this way and then snap it into place. And it's not difficult to figure out which side is up and which side is down because these small female ends on the bottom match these small male ends. So you can, it only goes on one way and it's something similar to this right here. And when you match that piece up right there, there it is. And if I can <laughs> do it one-handed, you guys can do it two-handed. And then put your two screws back in, close the door, or turn the light off, and you're done. And I guess the moment of truth. Let's see what happens when we get close to completing it. I'm not going to put this on if it's uh, still in air. Okay. That's normal when you plug it back in and we'll make all that go away here in a little bit. But that's a good thing. Good thing. Good thing. So that's quick 30 seconds. Interrupt it. Good to go. And which one? Start. And good to go. All right, clear that and I we already have and in a lean effort, we already have one digital clock right here. It doesn't make any sense to set this one to. It doesn't add any value. And I will install the this louvered piece right here. Screw here, screw here, and we're done. And this is Two Second Lean in Tulsa, and I hope you guys get a ton of information out of this as you watch me go through this and learn uh, pretty much in real time. Thanks. And to recap, the tools I used, screwdriver with a semi-long headed uh, Phillips screwdriver, Torx, Allen wrench, magic marker, tape, cleaning supplies, uh, Q-tips, nasty rag, nasty towel, a little bit of dish soap, and a replacement part.